Hear ye, hear ye. Prepare thyself for a proclamation from the Dukes of Gaming. Do you love video games? Do you love staying up to date with the latest going ons of the gaming industry? Do you love shooting the breeze with your friends about all things interactive entertainment? Well then fine people, do we have a podcast just for you. Join us at the Dukes of Gaming podcast. Gather around as me and my fellow Dukes bring you the most interesting news, interesting topics, and spicy hot takes from the video game realm every single Monday. If that sounds like a blast to you, subscribe to Dukes of Gaming, no questions asked. Available wherever you get your podcast. Hear ye, hear ye, the ad read is over. That was just another pointless sequel that didn't have to be made. For the Evil Dead, uh, our next film that we're covering. Uh, this is film was made by Sam Raimi, and uh, it was actually he and his childhood friend Bruce Campbell grew up in Michigan. Uh, they both dreamed of being in the movies. Sam wanted to direct, Bruce wanted to act, and uh, their dream became a reality when they made a low-budget movie called Within the Woods. And they basically did it just as a proof of concept for this movie. And they managed to raise $90,000, which was the seed money that put together the eventual, I think, $375,000 budget for this movie. Um, it was filmed mostly in 1979 uh, with pickups extending into 1980. And it was finally released in 1981, where it played at a lot of places, became incredibly popular, uh, actually got its biggest boost when Stephen King saw it and wrote a really like glowing review said everyone's got to see this movie it's great and ended up grossing uh, a 2.7 million dollar box office so huge success um later Raimi would go on to eventually make sequels but the first thing he did was try to make a follow-up which was not evil dead related called crime wave um which flopped just fell right on its face and he couldn't get another project off the ground until he decided to make a sequel to the evil dead which is something that happened a couple of times in his career um so uh, this launched Raimi's career, obviously, launched Bruce Campbell's career, uh, and became a cult classic. But the real question is, what do we think about it? Yeah, so we'll be exploring the, uh, the entire franchise, which consists of four official movies, and, a, and an eventual fifth will be released, and we'll have to cover that movie at a later date. Um, joining us today, uh, Harris. Our, our guest, Andrew Hobson. Uh, Andrew, thanks for coming. Hey, what's up, guys? It's the... Uh we just missed the Cohen brothers, right? One uh, of them. Yeah, and there's the, uh, well, that's the uh, Sam Raimi and somebody else are the fishermen, I think. I have one of the Cohen brothers. I think the camera that they shot this on belonged to, like, one of the Cohen brothers owned the camera. Did it? Because I, th- I thought that they, I thought that they met Ethan on this movie. Joel because, Cohen. Or, no, Ethan, Ethan's the one who, who assisted and edited this. No, it's Joel Cohen. I watched the credits today. I know for a fact. Okay. One of them. Anyway, those guys are great. But uh, from what I, 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 somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but like they linked up because one of the Cohen brothers owned like, uh, I guess a step up from a Bolex, whatever can shoot color, um, 16 millimeter, whatever they shot this on. Um, I don't know. I thought that, I thought that I had heard that, Ethan, I thought it was Ethan, but Matt says Joel was working as an assistant for an editor in um, where was it? Michigan, Michigan, yeah, where they actually cut the film, and that's how Sam Raimi got to know him. Was and they, they became friends. The, yeah, yeah, in post production, they became friends, and then he was asking when when they were trying to do Blood Simple, he was like, "Hey, how do you raise money?" And then Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi actually starred in their proof of concept that they shot to do Blood Simple, and later Sam Raimi went on to co-write the Hudsucker Proxy with them. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, their friendship. And then, yeah, one of my favorite Coen Brothers One of them too. was dating Francis McDormand, I think. And oh, eventually, yeah. Yeah. And when they first moved out to L.A., 
I think it was, well, I can't remember what the uh, lineup was, but it was like the Coen brothers, Sam Raimi, Holly Hunter, Francis McDormand, and Kathy Bates were all like at various times sharing an apartment, <laughs> um, oh, so which cool. I think is like, seems like a really cool apartment uh, that's to awesome. be in. I love that. I love that stuff. I, I, like, what's his face? One of the Fairley brothers lived with Woody Harrelson. Yeah. For a while. Like, I love stories like that. Like, yeah. just like famous people with famous roommates. But, I like to believe before that, they're famous. I like to believe that living with Kathy Bates is good. I saw uh, this one uh, film where living with her was miserable uh <laughs> but i i'd like to think living with her in real life would be yeah i saw a movie a where, nice experience. i saw a movie where delivering where living with her was dolores claiborne <laughs> <laughs> oh i get it it's yeah nice who's the it's like, uh it's like a, a bad hat on a bad hat oh my god there you go you guys are great who's the creator of the well, i got a bad hat at liz claiborne actually once no okay. <laughs> <laughs> i don't shop there greg daniels <laughs> greg daniels he's the creator of the office right mm -hmm. yeah he was roommates with al gore i think there's, oh really? Yeah. It, uh, Tommy, Lee Tommy Lee Jones is roommate. Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, maybe that's Harvard. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds Dude, like a maybe convenient. it was all three of them. Greg, maybe yeah, it was all of them Daniels together. They no, no, they were they were roommates at Yale. Maybe. Yeah. That sounds like a convenient. It was group. like a Huey, Louie, and Dewey situation, yeah. <laughs> like a triple bunk bed. Um, Damn it, Al! You wet the bed again. <laughs> Al Gore, Greg Daniels, and Tommy Lee Jones. David Lynch was roommates with um, Peter Wolf from uh, what's it called? Jay Giles Band. And actually oh. asked him to move out because he was too weird. <laughs> David Lynch was like, it. this guy's a little much for me. Jay Giles, freeze frame? Yeah. The and very same. Uh, they're the money money for nothing chicks for free band, right? No. No, that's... Uh, dire Straits. Dire, dire, dire Straits. Jay oh, Giles is freeze frame. Yeah, okay. By the way, interesting bit of trivia about this shot. That haze is cigarette smoke because they couldn't afford a haze machine. So whenever they had to have like haze in sunlight, they would just have somebody smoking off camera and blowing the smoke out there, which that I think is that's, that's what's so great it. about this movie is that it's so scotch tape put together. Yeah. I can't wait for the scene where they're eating food because they had no food to eat. Yeah. They have like <laughs> they were literally freezing and starving in this it's cabin. It's like watching it's like, like a little girl's tea party. They're like, yeah. mm, this is good. <laughs> it's like the scene from Hook. Yeah. Ninety five percent of the trivia that I read for this movie it was about how horrible making this movie was and how everyone hated it. everyone hated it they all argued constantly they lit 13 people lived in this shitty cabin that they found that's in like the backwoods of tennessee somewhere to the point where like they can't find it anymore like they've tried people have tried to go back to it and like it doesn't exist on a map it's gone well interestingly it the only thing they Built, I think this was a, this was a separate barn nearby where all the chains, chainsaws and weird tools and stuff was filmed in a barn that was nearby, which actually had a, a root cellar where they filmed all the basement stuff. The cabin didn't have a basement, so they cut a hole in the floor, dug a ditch under the hole, and just pretended to walk in and out of it for the shots. But the other thing the cabin didn't have was a chimney. Didn't have a fireplace. So they actually built a stone fireplace into the cabin for this movie, and a few years later, the cabin burned down, and the only thing that was standing was the fireplace that they built for the movie. So now the only evidence that this movie actually existed was the fireplace that they built at this shitty cabin. <laughs> that's see. great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, uh, you know, it's funny, like, reading all about this movie, and they're saying that a lot of people considered it at the time to be one of the scariest movies ever made. It's, like, banned in the UK. It was banned until the year, like, 2014 or something like that. Um wow. And, you know, to watch it now, it's almost, like, tame. Well, I think we also, don't stuff, we you know? sort of watch it through the prism of the subsequent movies? And it just, like, all the random gore and craziness is kind of, like, it seems almost funny. By, even though this movie is mostly played straight. Yeah. When, when was everybody's first time seeing this movie? That is a great question. That yeah. is a great question. Um, Are you... Are you speaking? Is this question to us in the room? You said everybody. So are you <laughs> Everyone in <laughs> the yeah. world. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know it all. This um, tweet at Harris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I I don't. I know that growing up by the local video store, mom and pop that didn't have. We didn't. You know, this is pre-blockbuster, so you just had the selection of what was at the video store. And they didn't have everything. So we had The Evil Dead 2. So the first movie I saw was The Evil Dead 2. Um, oh, wow. And, which I loved. And then my girlfriend in high school 
loved Army of Darkness, which I think came out sometime when we were in like middle school or something. So I watched that a million times. And then I don't think I saw this until after I'd seen both of those. So definitely my entire impression of this and probably the reason that this is my least favorite of all, all of them is that it was the third one I watched and I was like, this isn't very funny. <laughs> yeah oh great here's the food scene look yeah, at this like ketchup like, yeah here's ketchup a oh they're full of water yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a bowl of brown <laughs> yeah yeah here's some empty plate that is there's literal that's one, mud water that a production system went outside was like oh gosh <laughs> uh that's tomato soup um what's this uh orange stub- substance in this close Party bowl. down. I'll take here some of the orange and some of the blue and don't get cheap on me. <laughs> <laughs> don't get cheap on me. Here's the, here's two, 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 two. This is my favorite line, which means party down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy's really uh, enjoying his moment. That guy's, oh, great framing. That's I think wonderful. my favorite line is when he says, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And then his next line is like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, or whatever he said. Andrew, what was your first experience watching this movie? I know exactly when and where I was. Uh, Bryn Mawr, it's now called the Bryn Mawr Film Institute. It's like an independent film theater. I hope it's still doing well um, post-COVID. But it's a old-time movie theater outside Philadelphia, and they used to do, we knew people growing up that used to run the theater and they would play, they would basically do like midnight movies and somebody played this off of a DVD player, not like a film projection, but it was awesome. I never saw, I was, I was going into my first year, second year of college. This was my best friend, Kevin Kelly. And it was a cool little setup. Like you would bring in beer and watch movies and we watched this movie and Natural Born Killers. But this movie we watched first. And it was... I watched this before any of the other Evil Deads. And I think this is just... I just loved it. I thought it was so cool. I didn't think it was scary. I just thought it was so awesome and badass that these... Because I think they're all buds. Or at least they were all buds. And they just went out and made a movie. And I think that was just... The most re- revolutionary, cool thing of all time. Yeah. So I think the I think most of these actors were cast other than Bruce Campbell. But Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi were childhood friends. I think they went to middle school or high school together. And then um, what's the other guy? The producer. Um, Rob Tapert. Yeah. Yeah. Tapert. Tapert. I think. Um, yeah. He was a guy that they had met, uh, you know, when they were, you know, teens. Another Michigan guy. And then. Other than that, I think it was like most of the crew was their friends and family. So they like all the people that are off camera are like, you know, I know Sam Raimi's brother ended up being the fake Shemp, which is a term they coined for basically any time Bruce Campbell had to act across from one of the actors who had left because most of these actors left early. So whenever they realized they needed a shot or a scene afterwards or go back for reshoots, they couldn't get any of these actors back. So they would just put like a wig and a costume onto Sam Raimi's brother and he would... You know, yeah. I actually looked it up. They didn't coin that term. It's from the Three Stooges. I thought they, I thought they coined. I thought Sam Raimi coined that term based on the Three Stooges lore that they shot their their it last. Didn't movie feel with. like it on Wikipedia. It's it made it sound like the term fake shemp had been used like before, <laughs> and they showed examples from oh uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space because mm-hmm. oh. uh, what's his name uh, Bella Lugosi died while they were making that right. so they had to like film more scenes with someone else pretending to be well, him well Crispin Glover is probably the, the greatest most famous fake shemp yeah. which is a big part of the reason they can't have those anymore because he ended up suing the Back to the Future 2 producers for dressing up another actor to look like him oh yeah. man that mm. I don't know I gotta side with the, on. I'm on the team filmmaker for that it's they have to make a movie yeah, and also it, Harris, uh, the correct term for someone from Michigan is a Michigander. Oh, good point. Colin, what was That's the first just time? Been bothering what me. was the first time you saw this movie? <laughs> uh, so I saw this when I was uh, either eighteen or nineteen years old. Um, when I uh, the first time I went to college before I dropped out and went back, I I was you know trying to uh, discover movies that I would like as an adult. So ones that were scary or gross i was like oh yeah i gotta watch that now it's got blood and boobs in it yeah <laughs> this is an adult movie yeah i am an adult i'm a mature adult yeah i'll I watch, kept I'll watch this film time. with a glass of red wine <laughs> yeah i did the whole time i was watching it just every 10 minutes i was like i am an adult uh people really liked that um 
No, I loved it. Uh, I was just like super into it, especially just, you know, the low budget kind of feel to it. And um, I was also building up to watching Army of Darkness. I was told, you know, you need to see Army of Darkness. Like this is this is something you need to do. It is a masterpiece. It's hard but to argue with that. I wouldn't. There was no way I was going to watch it without, you know. You need to know the whole backstory, obviously. Exactly, which you don't <laughs> at all. Like, not really, no, really not at matter all. at all. And then when I when I saw Evil Dead Two, I was like very frustrated by the fact that it is the same movie. I've never seen. <laughs> I've never seen a like we're counting this as like currently a four movie franchise. I've never seen a four movie franchise where it is less necessary to have watched any of the other movies to enjoy any individual one of them. I don't know. I think this one is like pound for pound, almost identical to the Mad Max franchise well you know that is a good point mad max is another one that i think works because mad max is as four. mad max is four correct yeah, yeah. all right and it's true it that's does, another one that it does follow the same almost to it it's weird it's almost the first one uh george miller shot for next to nothing yeah and is a huge hit and then the road warrior mad max 2 is just kind of the same movie but with well, an actual budget, see, I, Thunderdome's way different. I, I, and yeah. Thunderdome is, I, I feel like Thunderdome's a departure the same way uh, Army of Darkness is a departure. You know, I think there's more similarities. Well, and this is another similarity between this franchise and that one. I think there's more similarities between Thunderdome and and the Road Warrior than there are between the Road Warrior and Mad Max. Only because Mad Max is like, there's still kind of a society. There's a government. He's a cop at the beginning. He has a family. We're finding out the backstory that drove him to be this nomadic insane renegade mm. um whereas this one uh, i do think that even though they were made several years apart and they weren't necessarily there wasn't necessarily a plan for a sequel evil dead 2 and and army of darkness are both really linked like evil dead 2 leads directly into army of darkness even references things that will happen in army of darkness even though i don't know that they planned to make army of darkness when they made that movie they mm. knew that it was a possibility and they built it in whereas this one's almost unrelated to evil dead to um as kind of like it, it you know maybe the other one we should mention is the uh, el mariachi and um because i think there's a lot of similarities there of like a low budget movie that they that one definitely that one only has three yeah but that one definitely has For a sequel has a sequel desperado oh, yeah. that feels that is like a very much like almost beat for beat remake of the original just like with more this money. is what we would have done if we had the money exactly to do it. Yeah. which is what which is what the first two evil dead movies feel like not, is, is not, not that there isn't desperado. some of that in road warrior but mm. the first uh mad max is definitely a different you know a different vibe yeah. just um but it's just i don't know you keep watching this and harris uh i don't know what your guys filmmaking backgrounds are um all i know is that i never made a movie where i didn't or worked on a movie where i couldn't replay what we just shot mm. <laughs> yeah that's true and that I, could you imagine doing this i've shot on 16 millimeter where it's like you're just sort of flying blind and you're like boy i hope we expose that one properly but and then you get the film back and you're like oh my god it looks like shit we can't use these shots when, now when you shot super 60 was that like a usd like you're no, gonna no, use no, a this is years ago weekend. this is like years ago on like an re uh, like our aeroflex uh, little you know um yeah shitty little 16 mil thing so the first movie i ever worked on we shot super 16 but we still had a video village set mm -hmm. up yeah they still had to figure out and could do the uh playback playback and yeah i mean it was it must it it, it, it definitely must have been scary for these guys and i'm sure they had times when they like didn't get it right and they like you know that was probably part of the reshoots that they had to do later because they had to do pretty extensive reshoots without any of the actors and some of that had to be because they were like oh shit this is underexposed this is overexposed this it's is a mess. so i mean and it's i have i my brain i have a tough time with the whole Okay, well, let's expose for the aperture and let's do this. Yeah, and you got to do math. They were really <laughs> good have, at metering then. They like, you know, they knew how to use those light meters. Like they knew exactly where to put them and like exactly how to read them. And, you know, like you were, yeah, you were totally, you needed to have that discipline. Yeah. Like you would have been shut out otherwise. And if you're doing something like adjusting the shutter speed, now that's going to throw everything off when you were, and especially like this is something that, you know, I've done is like when you're, trying to figure out okay now i'm going to shoot in slow motion i'm going to uh, i'm going to over crank oh, yeah. something 
but now how does that affect my aperture? And you knew you had to like stop up to, to get the ap- aperture yeah. right. That's yeah, that's ridiculous. I like that's you also, guys, also yeah. when you're cutting it together, you don't just put it into Da Vinci and go like, Oh great. We're just going to lighten this up and <laughs> take this, take the, take the mid tones down no, or you something. You have to order it. <laughs> from a lab. Yeah. You have to order it from a lab by the real. And then when it comes back and you're like, this is what you got, you know, like that's it. You know, you get what you get. Yeah. This, yeah, like this, this shot's focus, completely right out of focus. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and you see a lot of like the bloopers get left into this, like where guys miss their marks or miss their yeah. lines, and it's just like, nope, just go, <laughs> just just go. To be totally honest, like, I mean, that's kind of like, there's so many great movies for me where, yeah, this shot's out of focus. It's in focus Fish. now. Uh, like, well, he's he's almost he's still a little soft. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh there. now it's that's she's in focus. Here we that's go. A tough oh shot. yeah. No, sure. Yeah she yeah she's in focus right there when she's standing <laughs> looming over the camera. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those things that's like uh, you got a little more respect for what they had to go through, and you're a little more forgiving of the mistakes. One of my favorite moments in this movie, and I don't even know if it's a mistake or not, is where the guy's like sitting on the door trying to keep the door down as it's bouncing. And then it like has one more bounce and he sort of sits there for a second and just holds on him as he's like looking around waiting yeah. for it to bounce again. <laughs> but I like that they kind of leave in the... the I, I love those little bumps. Yeah. Like there's a shot in Rocky where it looks like... The first Rocky where it looks like it's the steady cam shot where Sylvester's or Rocky's walking down the road and it literally... You see him like count off a beat in his head and then start to walk. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's why my, my it, favorite shot in Rocky is him jumping around on the top of the steps, which once you know that that shot was originally a push in and they just played it in reverse, you can't stop seeing him punching backwards and, and running around backwards. That shot. Oh my it's hilarious. God. It's amazing. I like the idea. And this is going to sound like I'm joking, but I'm not. Um, like I like the idea of the director like purposefully interfering with the camera operator just to get the feel of it. You know, like <laughs> just to get to the feel of the camera operator, like not fully like being in the moment. You know, the camera operator can't be too perfect. Mm. You know, the focus can't always be too sharp. Uh, we have to feel like you know there are things affecting us if we're the viewer. You know, like we're there. Well, that's whatever. actually they've done that with they've had cameras that like instead of just sitting the camera on a tripod, sometimes they'll like deflate a volleyball yeah. and set the camera on top of it just so that it's not still. They want the camera to be stable and pointing in the same direction, but they don't want it yeah. to be a hundred percent still. So they'll just sit it on something. So it's got a little wiggle to it, um, to, which is yeah. which, to simulate imperfection. Yeah. Or that, just the, that now we can totally avoid if we want director to. Director just shoving the camera up to <laughs> just tri- <laughs> tripping him as he's walking yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Just he gets a he gets a PA to like crouch down behind him, and he put. No, just, <laughs> they knew what they were doing though, in terms of um, in terms of like, and, uh, apparently none of them were huge horror fans. Yeah, wow. but they understood that that was what they could do on the cheap. That had a shot at actually making money, and they and they got the horror vibe. Is like we've got to see a couple of boobs, and there's got to be like gallons and gallons of blood. Well, this whole. The, the the beginning of like when the evil you know first starts showing up this is very like because I, I feel like the audience is with the the one girl who's not in a couple and then like some like fucked up shit starts happening to you it like that's it's that combination of scary where you like a jump scare and also irksome because what's happening is like yeah. disturbing so for me <clears throat> I first saw this movie uh, in in undergrad I think I was like a junior in college and um it was like, for some reason for me, this whole series I avoided when I was a kid. You ever go to like the, your, your local video store as a kid and like, you, you know, you've just got the covers of the boxes that you're looking at and like, there's something about the cover that like freaked me out. It might've been the cover oh, yeah. of Evil Dead yeah. 2. The, yeah. The skull. So you yeah. just see it, you're like, no way. No way. Uh, that, for yeah. me, that was Tetsuo the Iron Man. Uh, and, for <laughs> me, that was It's Alive. Oh yeah, that's oh, gotcha. that's I did. still haven't seen it, but I remember just as a kid, like not gonna happen. Is that a baby carriage? And yeah. it's like, yeah, baby carriage. Yeah, that's scary. Do you remember Ghoulies? I think that was a yeah, movie where it's like bursting out of guy the out of the toilet. Yeah, sure. like, yeah. <laughs> that, that, no, that oh, was actually that was why I was like, we gotta rent Ghoulies. There's, look, there's a monster coming out of the toilet. It's gotta be great. Oh no, monster but, uh, coming out of the toilet is one of the worst things that. Who here's worked at a movie theater? 
Or excuse me, movie theater, yeah. Or video store. Or video store. Neither. I almost worked at a movie theater, but... I've worked at a video store. I worked at TLA Video. And, yeah, it's a lot. I worked there as an adult finishing up college, and it's alive. The cover to that, I was like, oh, that's still scary. (laughs) It's still getting me. Yeah, there's a couple of classics. Oh, my God. Harris and I are developing a movie right now. We're not going to talk about that, but... We should promo the, the hell You're out allowed of that. Thing. We should promo the hell out of that. But it involves here's, monsters and toilets. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like that's the thing about this movie too that's kind of like because when you develop a movie, you work the hell out of a script. You ask questions about everything. Why is this here? Why is that here? Why is this here? But you look at this movie and you're like, I guess maybe they ask some questions. Like this gal's not in a relationship, but she still goes into the woods and when she's there she doesn't seem all too happy to be hanging out there yeah it's like what absolutely is, what is yeah there's no reason for she, her to go out into the woods other it, than to get raped by sticks she Uh-oh. senses <laughs> there's something out there and then once she gets out there she realizes oh like God. oh this is the She's evil in too deep this is yeah. actually this scene is i think why it got banned in so many countries and stuff mm-hmm. the uh, famous yes, disturbing. tree rape scene which is honestly some of the best special effects in this movie is these like reverse reverse effects of the vines wrapping around her yeah that's just them and taking the vines off of her yeah. plate in reverse right? but i mean yeah. this is like all practical and it's done really well and it is pretty disturbing and it falls just short of being completely tasteless it's it's fairly tasteless but it's it you know i think it's it could be more tasteless if you actually saw nudity yeah, yeah. well we, we do see a little see one see some boobs um but uh yeah we it it's it sort of she ends up getting like dragged through the woods Rather than like full her, on, her slippers you know. look really comfortable. I will say. Oh my yeah. god. Um, yeah, but I it forgot is. Forgot about it's this. Pretty scene. horrifying. This is yeah. Yeah, especially the uh, yeah the branches crawling up her. This legs. is definitely yeah. Like there was no. There's a lot of like gross stuff in this movie, but this is the most like disturbing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like uh, the ankle stab for me was the one thing that I didn't want to look at. Um, but this is definitely the most disturbing conceptually, I think, in the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Forgot about this. Yeah, it's pretty horrifying. This next shot right here. Yep. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. Yep. Um, They definitely did not have any... Oh, my God. Fucking completely forgot about that. Yep. Uh, so this is... the. I mean, the character is is supposed to be Ash's sister. So that's oh, why really? she's there. I never... Yeah. I never understood that. Um, they do say it. It's like, I yeah, thought they, she was like friends with the other girl and she's just like can't get it. No, they mention it at the end. And this is why she's like, she she's always calling him Ashley and nobody else calls him Ashley. I like that. Um, but, I like that uh, we know his name is Ashley. It's not like Ashford. <laughs> yeah. Um, I completely forgot. Holy shit. I've, it's been so long since I've watched this whole movie. I remember watching that in the movie theater and being like, oh my God, these, like, nobody told these people not to do. Like, could you imagine this shit happening? Oh, yeah. This is, this would not Was, go over well. They didn't, did they not, did they do, did they touch this at all in the remake? They have the, they have the girl go get dragged out in the woods and attacked by the trees, but it's not anything approaching this. Um, Oh wait! In the in the recent remake or in Evil Dead Two? That's <laughs> no, no, because the, they're both kind of the this. recent. No, the recent remake. I don't remember. Do you? I don't do remember you? either. Don't you know, so. I saw that movie. I, I remember it. enjoying it, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah, like, it seems anything. like something that they would have to at least have in some part. But they could, they also might have like gender swapped it or something. How old was were the Raimi Bros when they made this? He was twenty. Uh, he was twenty. Yeah, yeah, that totally tracks. This is somebody who does not understand the gravity of sexual assault. Yeah, but also like, this was an era where horror movies and sexual assault were kind of that was just you know part of a lot of them you know, um, so it it doesn't seem like I mean for, forget about all the ones like you know I spit on your grave or something that were built around the premise of yeah somebody becoming a what there was the, also this era of these tasteless horror movies like I don't know if tasteless is the right word but like. The Hills Have Eyes, the original, and like uh, Last House on the Left. Well, Last oh, House on the Left was a remake. That's a remake of a remake of the Bergman movie. Yeah, uh, um, Virgin Spring. Virgin Spring. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is honestly, I like both those movies, but Virgin Spring is is a stellar film. But it's like to see a serious treatment 
of that yeah, same concept Max, of Max von Sydow. Yep. Yeah, it's like. And he does. He has the same moment in in Last House on the Left that the dad does when he's running around with a chainsaw, hacking up his daughter's, you know, assaulters. Max von Sydow has the exact same like yeah. insane butchering. Of, well, you see that like that feels like what's it called? Uh, what's the Denis movie? Oh, uh, prisoners. Uh, prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, it's funny how. Or it's not funny. It's just, it's interesting how those two, specifically in this kind of era of filmmaking, those themes, horror and kind of sexual assault, are kind of intertwined. Yeah. Well, and it, I think maybe some of it was just that these were like, these ended up being like midnight movie type of things that were, you know, the taboos and the, yeah. you know, kind of the more scandalous, the better. Uh, yeah. And, and like, you know, throughout time the the challenge of the horror director is to be able to disturb people with uh mm -hmm. what, what they've seen you know like without uh you know actually like you know making them want to press charges against you i guess right <laughs> like, right you know? well that's like where it gets when it when it crosses the line for me is like when it's like the, you know i never really liked the hostile movies because it just felt like it was just how much pain and suffering can we put our characters through and how badly yeah. can we mutilate people on camera before everyone just walks out. But I could also understand how some people would look at something like the scene we just saw with the tree rape and be like, yeah, that's the line for me. You know, like I think everyone's, yeah. and some people, anything with any blood is just like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. Give me a rom-com. Uh, yeah. I, it, yeah. I, this is like, this is a movie for boys. For yeah. young boys oh, who for don't sure. understand yeah. the world, because it's made by young boys who don't yeah. understand the yeah. world. No, That's, I will say, uh, as someone who watched it for the first time, being either eighteen or nineteen years old, it just uh, it's not as good anymore to me. Uh, the 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 pleasure from the viewing experience has gone down a little bit. Uh, this is a movie that's supposed to be seen at midnight with a warm beer, and like it maybe is your fourth or fifth time drinking. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah or in a crowded theater also at midnight yeah yeah um, it's it's i don't know it's it's a different era i don't know how would what's it called how do you think like how do you think the euphoria crowd would do with a movie like this i mean don't yeah. they have their own versions of this they're not, yeah they're not saying the right slang words you know <laughs> they're not saying this gives this or whatever and they're not you know what no, yeah, I get, no, like I, I, Ash I is giving saying. like something vibe or whatever, you know, right now. Yeah. Ash is totally giving uh, whatever, you know, that's like how they, they do get some good shot. I mean, it's all very extreme and over the top, all the canted angles and the snap zooms and the, I guess there's no snap zooms. This, but there's a lot of like, you know, extreme push ins. And, yeah. uh, but it's, like, and all the lighting is very theatrical. Yeah. Look, the poor man's process in the car. You could know that, you know, there's somebody on the hood of this car right now, yeah. just rocking it back and forth. Being like, yeah, they're driving as somebody else. It throws branch is across the uh, the lighting. <laughs> One of my favorite canted angles is coming up right now, though. Is, oh uh, yeah, when they get out of the car when they've approached the bridge, and it is unclear what kind of like surface this car is parked on. Yeah, yeah, this is this is great. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the more famous. Yeah, because it looks like it looks like they're parallel to the ground, but then yeah. you notice that he's walking completely sideways. Well, what the, yeah, you know, they just, they parked the car on a hill and they parked the car sideways on a hill and they leveled Whoa, the, what the, is they that? leveled the camera to the car. <laughs> what? The? What is the shape of the ground there? So, I'm so, so for, confused. So to, to clarify for our listeners, this is a point where um, Ash is driving his sister back to town and they realize the bridge is out and he stops the car to take a look around and he gets out. And when he walks in front of the car, he literally looks like he's walking at a 45 degree angle. And they, they did that by just parking the car on a hill and he walked out normally, but the camera was aligned with how the car was aligned. So it this looks has like to be gravity is defying though. This can't be like one guy smoking a cigarette. <laughs> one guy yeah. smoking a bunch of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Several <laughs> guys smoking you ever, Yeah, you ever cigarette. seen the guy with the entire pack of cigarettes jammed in his mouth? That's the that's, whole pack. That's yeah. A, yeah, that looks, it's a Simpsons is it, joke. So wait, are we doing yeah. like, are, are you saying like the, the, cir the cigarettes are all one horizontal line along uh, with the, the No, the no, lips, it's like or a, is it the big, the big, the big circle the big where circle. it's all stuffed? Yeah, it's a big circle. The trick is, is part of that entire process yeah. uh, I know from experience is trying to light them all at the same time you need a big flame how did they yeah. how did they oh shit this looks good should we do the plot uh, so it's not yet. till Evil Dead 2 where we see that the bridge has been destroyed in the shape of a hand right I love everything about the bridge in Evil Dead 2 <laughs> yeah 
But guys, that's, guys, um, yeah, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, my bad. My yeah, bad. Who, who's, <laughs> whose turn is it to summarize the plot? I think it might be it's me. Matt. Oh, good. Okay. Thankfully, the plot is yeah. pretty simple. I've got two minutes in the clock. Just don't forget and, about the evil. Uh, you're <laughs> it's ready, not <laughs> good. <laughs> All right. All right, go. Okay. Uh, so this is the Evil Dead, and uh, we start off, and there's five college-age friends, and they're driving in a car uh, to a cabin in the woods, and they are arrive and pretty shortly after um they find that the place is quite creepy and decrepit and uh they find a book uh, that's made of human skin and they find some tapes and they play the tapes and they hear some incantations in another language and uh once that happens they start seeing demonic shit uh and actually i think they see some demonic shit before that even happens uh honestly i, I don't remember quite but um Little by little, uh, one by one, they all uh, get possessed by a demon, and uh, and Ash, our hero, has to um, chop them up uh, pretty gorily. Um, and basically, he's the last man standing in the end. Um, and he realizes that the the way to kill them, or they're trying to survive till dawn. They think that's gonna, you know, be the thing that that helps them. But uh, really, it's the book of the dead needs to be destroyed. And he throws it in the fire and uh it kills the remaining demons and uh he the sun rises and he walks out and then our final shot is the evil as colin pointed out hurtling towards ash as he screams and we zoom into his mouth and that's the end of the movie got that done in great time and all he had to do was skip all the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, I mean, Good trick. I oh. love how much screen time evil. Just can one by one, they all get possessed. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's it. That's I mean, what am I going to do? She gets yeah, possessed. Much. And then she look gets this. possessed. Look at this. this is a good effect. Yeah. This yeah. effect is awesome. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of like random homemade rigs to make people levitate and to drag them through the woods and stuff. And apparently, it was all very dangerous, and almost everyone got injured at some point. Um, some of the makeup is very, very good. Some of it is yeah, no. it, it I, really I, runs. The, it runs the gamut. The yeah. makeup was all great before high definition. Yeah, yeah, that was. It's like the it's like the George Romero Dawn of the Dead. What's so, the what's the mall right. one? Yeah, the, the Dawn, Dawn, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the yeah. Dead. Yeah. It is like. It's. It looks like. You know what a lot of it is. is it, a lot of times it's collar lines too. You can yeah. see that the makeup only goes and the eyes. down. Yeah, down. Like yeah. The, and like there are the fingers parts. popping yeah. out. Like I hate that. Um, before we go any further, there are two things I want to jump on that we're kind of skipping over them quickly. So we talked a lot about the uh, the rape oh, I hate scene oh, in the, the woods. Fucking ankle oh stab. The oh, ankle yeah. stab is that's the grossest thing that oh, happens in the Star oh, movie. Oh. That's it clearly looks not real. awesome though. And it's going on forever. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah, so we talked a lot about the rape scene, but um, other than that, I mean, really, that's the most sexual thing that happens in this movie. There's For a movie that has three female characters, there's no real exploitation of, uh, unlike other horror films of this time, I feel like, there, there's no real exploitation. There's no hardcore. There's a little bit of nudity. You see the one girl take her shirt side off. Side boob, yeah, side yeah. boob, a nipple here or there. Yeah, but I felt that that was obligatory, and like... You know, there, there's no teenage, you know, sex like, oh, who's going to fuck who kind of is like where these movies usually go. Right. No, there's, the romance is kind of like sweet between yeah. Ash and his yeah. girl. He's got his. They don't explain why a magnifying glass is significant. Though. Well, I, Colin, I like some character. I actually have an answer for that. Oh, nice. Thank um, you. <laughs> and I think it sort of ties into something that I wanted to mention, which is that this was like a 70 page script. Wow. And it turned into an 85 minute movie, but their first cut was actually like 117 minutes <laughs> and they turned it from 117 minutes down to 85. And the way they did this was take away. Apparently they had a lot of scenes of Ash dealing with guilt about killing his sister and killing and all his friends dying and being the only survivor. And like all these moments of like wrestling with the, all the, you know, reality of this situation and a they were like stuff comes across yeah but they were like the yeah you know what we yeah. don't we should just like cut it down to just the gore and just the action and that's how they got the 85 minute version of this but one of the things they cut was originally he was supposed to not be able to burn the D book of the dead in the fireplace and what he did was took the magnifying glass and used it to reflect the sunlight on the book and that's how he burned it at the end oh um that's cool. And I don't know if they actually filmed that or if that was just something they dropped uh, once they started filming. 
but that was that was the magnifying glass was supposed to be a payoff. He gives her the magnifying glass pendant. But that's not what I was asking about. I'm asking about in their relationship. Why is the magnifying glass significant to her? Is she like, is she like a wannabe Sherlock Holmes? And she's like, I always like to maybe she check for eyesight. clues. Maybe she's like really into clues. She says clues a lot. <laughs> maybe she's really into lighting ants on fire, like in like a kind of a pyromaniac sadistic, kind of way. Yeah, yeah. sadistic way. Maybe she's she like, has trouble seeing out of her right eye, and she like holds it up. It's, like it's a clearly monocle. not a monocle. <laughs> yeah, it it a has monocle. a stem. There's a there's a handle part. Yeah, if it clearly was a monocle, a monocle, it would have been an even better gift. I exactly. I I'm I'm with both of you on that. I we all wish it was a monocle. Colin wouldn't be asking any monocle. questions if if the guy was giving his girlfriend a monocle. He'd be like, yes, obviously, <laughs> a great gift for a woman. <laughs> yes. It's hot. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, and we were kind of going in that direction, talking about the makeup, is that we have to remember this movie was shot on, what, 16 millimeter film? And then it was yeah. blown up to 35. And for most of its existence, it was pretty much seen in, like, you know, dingy movie theaters on 35 millimeter and then, like, eventually on VHS, which, I mean, we all grew up watching VHS tapes and, like, they have a certain quality to them. And horror movies... It, it, it sort of elevates horror movies, you know? It gives it that sort of, like, the hiss of tape and, like, the just the, the, the what do you call them, lines, the tracking lines, you know? like This is definitely, like, a product of people sort of in our general age range, though, I think. It's a nostalgia for the crappiness of VHS and, you know, having these first formative film-watching experiences on that very blurry, you know... Yeah, th- and you kind of get it still, you know, because this doesn't look that great... But they I mean, say it helps. It, it helps definition. that only half the shots are in focus. So. Yeah. <laughs> they say some people wouldn't have learned how to be kind without learning to first rewind. Well, <laughs> it's, I don't even know what to do with that. Really necessary for me to say that. I think mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, the blocking is actually the. That's the thing that is really impressive when you watch this is like the blocking is specifically on the shots from the demon's point of view looking yeah. into the house like this is not easy i still That's, am confused about the actual layout of the house i i realize it's a rectangle but it it seems like it's not a rectangle to me <laughs> um i don't know what to tell you well I mean, okay it's here let's go, it's got let, rooms in it let, let's go with this what bugs you about this movie? What don't you like? What didn't they do right? What is something that you wish they did better? I I don't... I mean... I'll say... I'll jump in and say... We mentioned it already. The fact that the girl goes out into the woods by herself bugs me. You know, I watched it... As I'm watching the movie, I'm like, why is she doing this? This is just for the plot. This yeah. is just to get her out there and to have this scene. They could have done this better. Uh, it feels unnecessary it's from a well it's it's clearly it's so dated but it's weirdly charming at the same time Mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah Uh, obviously like some of the effects are outdated but like you watch them and they do have this charm and you can appreciate them like the end i love at the end when uh he throws the book in the fire and then you start to see them all disintegrate and it's like this stop motion. Yeah. Like yeah. obviously that looks it's bad. Like clay. Yeah, it's, yeah. It yeah. looks silly, but it's, like you watch it and you're like, even though in your mind, you know, it's like not the best way to do this effect. You, I just love it. But it's it. better than shitty CGI. I'll tell you. Yeah. It also still looks really gross. Like the, right. Yeah. It's all and the it's, liquids and like semi liquids. It looks tactile. It. And, just, uh, yeah. It, What's charming about this movie to me is that I saw this movie after I saw Michel Gondry's Everlong music video for the Foo Fighters, which is clearly inspired by this. You ever seen it? Shit, I don't know I've if I've heard that seen song it. like a million times, and I'm not sure if I've seen the video. The music video is, if you watch the music video, Dave Grohl, I, I, Dave Grohl looks just like uh, Bruce Campbell. Is there a lot of like zooming camera? Well, no, it's him and Taylor Hawkins, uh, rest in peace, um, is dressed up like a, uh, she's, he's dressed up like a girl and he's playing Dave Grohl's uh, girlfriend in the movie and they're in a part of it, they're in a cabin, but it's clearly like some of the scenes in this incredible music 
video or inspired by this. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, that's where they got the idea from it. Um, but, oh, man, that's so cool. I, what bugs me about this movie is, I mean, it's corny as hell, but whatever. I love it. Like, okay, look at the makeup. If you look carefully, you can see that, like, the veins are drawn on. You yeah. Know? And, like, you can but see, tell. in this scene, I think the... The 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 cellar makeup yeah, the looks girl really the, good. Yeah, the girl in the, the basement here looks not in the cellar great. looks really bad. Yeah, and this is I mean honestly I I definitely agree with Matt that like some of the plot stuff is a little annoying because it just it it's clearly just kind of held together by a thread. But this is a genre where that isn't supposed to be important. And also I I agree the thing that bothers me the most is definitely the inconsistency of good makeup bad makeup like Bruce Campbell ends up with some really great cuts in his face but meanwhile what's his name this other guy just has like it looks like somebody just slathered some cheap fake blood on him here um and I don't know I wish that the makeup was more consistently good but then again it's a miracle this movie ever got made at all so yeah. it's I feel weird complaining about it because yeah, they have like I, they have like good stop motion animation in this but I don't, like if good, you didn't know that if you didn't know anything about this movie and you were just watching it you were just a kid and you catch it on TV or whatever yeah you know like what sucks about this movie and what is good I think I think there's not a lot I mean aside from the one thing that I said about the girl going out into the woods for no reason like a lot of what makes horror movies like this bad are things like that where you're like, come on, like they wouldn't do that. You know, you're watching it and you're like, why the fuck are they like doing this or whatever? But I think for what it is, this movie, you know, makes makes sense. They're stuck there. They try to escape. They can't get out. They don't have cell phones, obviously. Yeah. They're, you know, they just got to make it through the night. I, fil I filter this through the prism of watch it, like watching a movie you know, if you're in a relationship, uh, unless you're like, okay, leave me alone for four hours. I'm going to watch a couple movies. You watch a movie with your girlfriend or with watching the tree rape scene. I remember when I watched that in the theaters being like, well, whoa, this is kind of wild. Like, and that was in the early 2000s being like, I can't believe they're kind of doing, it. I still think it's, it's still kind of like the, the, um, the bruise on this. Aside from that, it doesn't really annoy me, but it's just something. This movie makes you appreciate good filmmaking because here's the thing. The editing in this is great. The editing in this is everything is. You watch this, the whole thing is they're fixing mistakes because clearly right, they're as, cutting around stuff as they're making this, they're figuring out how to how to make films because that's just like they had an idea. They made this concept, whatever, but. All these inserts are clearly their pickup shots. And you just, as an editor and as a person who's made films, you watch this and you're like, oh, it's so clear that that shot is a shot that three months after they shot it, they were like, holy shit, we, we, we still owe some shots on this scene to get our point across. At the same time, I think it's amazing how well... Sam Raimi already had a knack for, like you said, the blocking, the camera blocking, you know, no, mo it, moving he, the camera. He clearly had a, uh, a skill for that. And it's funny how much of his style, what has become like sort of Sam Raimi's signature style was already kind of present in this film. This um, amazing, in in terms, not just the blocking, but also the editing. Um, you know, we got the yeah. blood on the lens there, blood which is the just great. Yeah. He's chopping oh. his girlfriend up right now. His yeah, he's cho yeah. chopping his girlfriend up. She is a she's turned into an un, un, a deadite. Yeah, right, right. yeah, he looks I mean, amazing. I, he's like dismembering her. I'll go. Um, and, I didn't and get Ash to... is just standing there watching it. And looking at Paul. <laughs> yeah, I like the like, and I like the twitching body parts on the ground. Like this is a great like. Moment. Okay, how did they do that? Is someone just pulling it on a string or something, or is someone's head actually in that right there? It's probably people uh, maybe stuff built into the floor. That like just vibrate. People yeah. just like yeah, move sticks yeah. or something. Or you can like, I mean, like they had the 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 capability to build like, you know, low grade electronics at that point that would just wiggle something. You know, that wasn't. I don't think that was actually that expensive for if you it's, knew what you were doing. It's just like a circuit that. But like, if you but if you think about like where they are, they're shooting a a movie for almost no money in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and the fact that they can make any of that happen, like, but that's the thing. It wasn't just like, oh, we'll get a guy who will figure this out for us. It's like, okay, we want these body parts to twitch. 
how can we do like what can we get how can we make this happen for little to no money um so yeah what i don't like about this movie i i will go off of what andrew said like i you know especially when i was like 18 or whatever also in the early 2000s watching this the first time i definitely like never met uh anyone female who had seen this movie or wanted to and never recommended it to like any one who was female to see it like because yeah there's like a scene with rape in it uh and so yeah i mean i don't know like it's it's definitely like a a, a boy horror movie i guess well, that it's treated yeah like sorry to cut you off but it's it's sexual assault treated on film by someone who probably hasn't experienced it Therefore, right. it lacks the kind of depth and understanding. Right. It's it's a blunt force movie. It's a midnight movie. Yeah, and a, a bunch of it, not just that scene, but a bunch of it is just meant to gross you out and disturb you too. And that, that's, you know, like obviously the goal, like for a lot of this. Um, but I would say what bothers me about this movie as a movie is um, I feel like there's like a redundancy to it. Like, and I do think that's kind of like um, something that happens in, you know, older horror movies, basically like, you know, what's coming to get them and it's just going to keep coming. And so like, you know, the evil's out there, the evil's going to keep making, you know, it's going to keep possessing. It's going to keep killing. Even when they, you know, dismember the body or kill one of the friends or whatever, once they have the evil, once they lock the woman in the basement, the evil's still coming. Especially like we keep getting the the evil cam perspective, the like somebody with a camera running through the woods being the evil, and uh, yeah, like I I do think. So your objection is that it's a horror movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't I know. Mean, Does this? What are? Here's the thing. I think the way you have to grade this movie is against other low budget films of its ilk. Right, and it's yeah, it stands up. I I do think also the the redundancy that I'm talking about plays a role in uh, making us feel like we are also trapped in the cabin because we can't get away from the evil if yeah. we're going to continue to watch the film. And know? to its credit, 85 minutes. So yeah. if it's a little repetitive, at least it's a little repetitive and fast. I think, I don't know. I think I was just, I think the the worst oh, part good, of my experience of these movies was um, just when I saw Evil Dead 2, how much uh, of the same movie I felt like it was. Um was basically the it's, like it frustrated me with both of the movies, you know. Oh man, I I don't because I love I I love like they've used it. Well, we'll talk about this more when we do Evil Dead too. So I don't want to step all over that. But they've used the word like a sequel and requel. Requel has come up recently as like a synonym for like a sequel of like a movie that's made much later. That's kind of a a Re- sequel to something sequel. But yeah. I feel like a requel is a specific thing, and I think there's only a few of them. And I think Desperado is one, and I think Evil Dead 2 is one. Yeah. Where it's like, and I actually think like Star Wars The Force Awakens is as close to a major movie requel as you can get, where it's like they're basically just redoing an older movie with better technology, but hitting all the same plot beats and all the essential... Like, they even say in Evil Dead... Again, I'm stepping all over our Evil Dead 2 episode, but they even say that like... How does it make sense that Ash goes back to the same cabin again later on? They're like, it doesn't make sense. It's not, this isn't really, this is the first time he's been there. He's not going mm-hmm. back. We 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 told him we were doing a sequel and then we just acted like we had a clean slate and remade the movie. Um, it's like they had to name it Evil Dead 2 to sell it. Exactly. But, but it's really but they never made a it a sequel. Yeah. They just, yeah. and it's the same thing like, uh, uh, you know, El Mariachi, Desperado is technically a sequel to El, El Mariachi because it's the same character and he did experience the events of El Mariachi, even though he's played by a different actor at the same time, he clearly was just like, I'm going to make the same fucking movie. I just have a big budget now and I'm going to pay lip service to the fact that this was, you know, that this is a sequel, but it's not really, there aren't that many true remakes sequels, you know, mm. but this is de- evil dead and evil dead two are definitely, is definitely one of them. I, and, but I just, I, I like seeing what a director like, seeing a director make a movie for $300,000 and then somebody say, here's a couple million. Oh my God. Get, yeah. Go, go have fun. And him just going like, ah, I got another crap. I mean, it is not a, it wasn't a sequel, so it doesn't count. But like, um, LA takedown is Michael Mann's first crack at heat. That's heat. Yeah. A TV movie made a shitty version of it. 
And then they were like, hey, make it with Robert De Niro and Al Pacino did for you, millions of dollars. You, Let's see, can you do a better job? Yeah, I think you probably can. Do you see, have you ever seen like YouTube videos of the coffee scene? It's mm-hmm. hilarious. Because yeah. the guy's like, what do you think I am? With a born to lose tattoo across my chest. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all the, all yeah. the famous Same lines dialogue. delivered by some guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> not, not one of the greatest actresses of his generation. Just some dude. <laughs> some, well, Whatever, it's tough, man. Acting. Oh tough. no, no, I, yeah. I, I get it. I'm not knocking him for not being I, as good as De Niro. I, I'm just saying that you know, it's. I think that's really interesting and fun, and this is what one of the reasons why I think Evil Dead Two is just. I think what's know, great I, about I the what's great about this movie and what you can glean from this movie is that there is like a school project to it. Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. gleefulness to it. The horror of this movie is limited because there's no levels going on here. There's one level it's there's no real subtext at all yeah um so what crazy shit can we do i also think for our budget i also think it's kind of difficult to connect to any of these characters because we know nothing about them yeah like if you if you're not paying close attention you don't even know that that first girl is no this has this has the complexity of like an improv scene yeah yeah and also you can feel that their tone you can feel that they want to be funny in this movie but they're not because I think they don't they don't want to be. They're like fighting their instinct to be a little goofy, to be a little camp. These actors, yeah, they seem like funny people. The who actors are not and being Sam funny. Raimi, I yeah. think they well, all kind of want to be a little <laughs> camp and play it up a little bit. But they're trying to make a serious horror movie, and they're yeah. trying to. And, I and read they, something that said that they actually were hired on the basis of making a horror comedy. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, they like I guess they saw some of the gore effects or whatever, and they were like, "We can't fuck with this. Like, we have to just make this a straight horror right. movie." And then by the second one, they were like, yeah, we could do whatever the fuck we want. And we kind of want to make it funny. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what's interesting is watching this with respect to Evil Dead 2. Because it feels like they had to make this movie to figure out what Evil Dead is. And what it is is a cartoon yeah. with uh, with humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the best moments of this are kind of the most over the top. And when they lean into that, yeah, but they, but you know, and it's, it was my least favorite thing about all this is to hear how miserable, like Matt said, every story you hear about the shoot was that they, everyone hated, they all like each other, but they hated the experience because it was, and I've shot in, you know, sub freezing temperatures for months. It is awful. It sucks. And, and especially like I was at least staying in a nice place. These people were all camping out in a cabin because on the best low budge indie movies, it feels like camp. It feels like you know summer camp, and you're hanging out with your buddies, and you kind of don't want it to end. And on the worst ones, it is a miserable grind where you're just like, when can I go back to civilization? And this sounds like one of the worst of the worst. When 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 you think about like the, hey, let's put on a show element of this it seems like it should be one of the best. It, the, seem, it seems like this should have been summer camp, but instead it was a miserable experience for them making it because of the conditions. But. The existential crisis you get from working on a shitty indie budget movie made for nothing when you're there for months is like nothing else. <laughs> no other panic. No <laughs> what other. What am I doing with my No life? <laughs> other panic attack. Who am I? I was, Where am I? I was 24 years old when I worked on my first indie like that. And you know those movies that get shot for $800,000 where it's the script kind of, the script sucks, but the movie should have been like, if you really wanted to do it, you needed to do it for $3 million. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, there's nothing. It's, it is a weird he, part of you says like, oh yeah, that's, that was a fun experience. I'd never want to do again. <laughs> like, yeah. no, that's not really, it's like, oh man, I wish I could fucking wipe that from my memory. Uh, like yeah. I got swine flu. Sorry, anyway. hold up. I think I missed something the first time around. And I, this time I tried to pay attention and I think I missed it again. The last time we saw this guy, the friend, he had a flashlight and he was walking outside, right? Like to, to try to find a way out. When did he come back? And what happened you to him? the other guy? Yeah. No, he was in a fight with the um yeah, one, he of got, the, uh, one of the possessed people. He got all fucked up. He in got some fucked fight. up, yeah. And and I think he was like the last time we saw him he was thrown into a wall, I believe. Yeah, he got he's been impaled as well already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I feel like I missed his death scene. This becomes yeah. Him. Well, it's like he gets injured, and then but Ash is still fighting, and then we come back to him, and we see him on the couch, and we're like, "Oh shit, is he dead? Or is, or is Ash pouring water into a corpse's mouth?" Yeah. yeah, that like you basically saw his death scene. It's when Ash yeah. is like talking to him about how things are going to be better, and they're going to make it out, and he's putting water in his mouth, and the dude's like, "Clearly, but he's not dead, dead because the evil." He might be dead. Yeah, well, yeah, he's definitely he's undead now. Yeah. He's a dead eye. I don't know. There's a tradition of filmmaking here that. I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> what? Hot take. <laughs> no, I, I like, here's the thing. It's like when you go to watch this movie in the theater, you watch it and the people around are excited to watch it. And it's like, there's a silent agreement amongst the midnight movie people that they're like, we know this is bad. We know this is corny, but we love it anyway. And oh, oh man, I'm not sure if I buy into that. So I love the fact that they went out and made a movie. I fucking love that. And I I know just as a person who's made movies that like they didn't set out like they they did this being like we're we're making good stuff. We're not gonna like. Are you saying that you're worried like herd mentality is is coming in at some point where like people are just saying it's good because it they sounds want like it to we're be good? it sounds like we're hearing you flip flop on your opinion in this movie <laughs> in real time? <laughs> no, like, yeah. no, 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 no. I it's not the it's not the listen like the movie is has an intrinsic excuse me not, is it has inherent value in it for multiple reasons, but I'm saying I think there's a tradition of filmmaking. That other people see this and they're like, well, we can just make a slop house movie and that's okay. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, no, I definitely I, think there's I a think mentality of like, hey, let's just throw some shit together and as long as there's enough blood, somebody will buy it. Like, well, not to shit on the thing. Sorry. Not to shit on trauma. You go ahead. Go ahead. Do, do, you guys, do you guys watch, have you guys ever watched trauma movies? Yeah. yeah. And some of them are pretty good. Some are pretty good, but I, I really f- like Tromeo and Juliet. I think that's one of the best ones they, they made. But there is like kind of a, yeah, but there's also like you can say that about some Russ Meyer movies, and there's you know Roger there's Corman, Roger Corman, yeah. But there's also some real classics. Like Roger Corman's made some great movies. So did Russ Meyer. So well, it's, it's like you got to make a movie, like you said, that has to have subtext. It has to mean something. You know, like you can't just make a movie for movie's sake. Otherwise, like no one's gonna give a fuck, right? Like, what is the? Why am I watching? this I movie? do yeah. think some people are out there to make a movie for a movie's sake. Well, but you're like gonna this. miss 100 <laughs> of the shots that you don't take. I think so you gotta make oh, all the only those. way all a the movie movies. gets a pass for not having any deeper meaning <laughs> is if it is an event film like this. Like this is this movie was made to be watched in a theater with a hundred people cheering and laughing at the parts that are gore. You know, the gory like. The memories that we have of this movie, when you close your eyes and think the evil dead, you think of the gory shit. You think of, like, the white eyes, you know, like, all the staples of this movie. And that's what it is. It left an impact on people when it came out because it was, like, gross. And, like, no one had ever seen anything like this at this level before, you know? And, yes, there's going to be copycats and there's going to be people who see this and say, I can do this and this is all you need to do to make a movie. And they're going to go make a subpar version of this. No, you know? but that, that here's the thing. The offshoot of this movie is that it did, like, it. guys like Edgar Wright made Fistful of Fingers because they're like, holy shit, he did this, I did this, and then Edgar Wright has, you know, this awesome career with some mm. serious classics. I don't know if Dead Alive is is, oh, uh, Dead Alive, is yeah. directly, but it seems like it's heavily influenced Dead by Dead Alive well. is so... Seems Stunning like though, but yeah. it's, <laughs> Dead Alive is is like. But do you? Th- but but I do feel like it's like got a lot of the DNA of this movie in it. Like I feel like that's how much later was that? I don't remember what year that's from. I feel um, like it is after this. We though. have the capability of looking that up. But we yeah, but it, soon? but Dead Alive brings something new to the table. Like the effects in that are also memorable. the effects in that are incredible. Yeah, and you look at that and you're like, this is. It's daunting. <laughs> the The lawnmower scene's incredible. Oh, my God, yeah. God, uh, I haven't seen that movie in so long. Dead Alive, 1992, so more than a decade later. Oh, wow. 
I so, and I, and I do think having, I haven't seen that in a while. I, I, I wonder if it's streaming anywhere. Cause that's a great, that's a, I would love to watch that again. Have you but, seen that movie? No, I have not. Oh my I'm God. just wondering, is there a comma between the two words or is it just the two words? No, it's, it's just the just two dead words. Alive. Interesting. So there's an opportunity there to make the next dead alive. Dead. 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 Alive. alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But Very that's good. not actually its original Australian or New Zealand yeah, title, what was right? Yeah, it? Uh, brain Kiwi dead. title? Oh, brain Dead. Brain dead. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. But the, um, its American title is Dead Alive. Uh, I mean, it is like... Was that... That wasn't Peter Jackson's first movie. That was... It was his second. His yeah, first movie like was... Bad uh, Taste? Bad Taste. Bad taste. Mm-hmm. bad taste is a little bit more in line with this. Well, yeah, Bad Taste cheaper. definitely definitely budget-wise, but I'm just talking like in terms of being inspired by the sort of thematically and just I, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of evil dead DNA in dead alive um, that I think is part of that is like the DIYness of it although obviously a bigger budget and more sophisticated and made you know more than a decade later but you know I do feel like there's you wouldn't get things like that without this I think there's like a, this is a, a prototype for a whole genre of movie bad bad taste does have that incredible sequence where Peter Jackson fights himself do you guys remember that? I saw it once so I, long yeah, ago. Peter Jackson. I'm so much more familiar with Dead Alive than Bad yeah. Taste. Bad Taste is not still really left in my mouth at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, take that bad joke and segue into top four. Okay. What, oh my God. Um, he must have just spent like four hours burying this woman, and she just gets right back out. Uh, he yeah, he just his his shit off. <laughs> he buried her very shallow. Um, all right. <laughs> I'll do I'll do a top four. Um, it has to be Bruce Campbell. It or? does have to be Bruce Campbell. Uh, oh, you're hosting it? Oh no. Well, all right. <sighs> uh, but I I worry that Bruce Campbell is going to be really easy. But we're we're going to see. This thing has to be made out of what styrofoam that he's hitting yeah. her with. <laughs> it must have went through like a lot of milk for like the deadites to just spew milk whenever they need to. All right. <laughs> Bruce Campbell might be easy. I'm going to give the usual caveat that we do when this is the case. Um, this is one of those actors that has a TV show in his top four. Oh. Uh-huh. So, uh, guest goes first. Andrew, can you give me one movie that you think is in Bruce Campbell's or top TV four show. according or TV, to, or TV show according to IMDb? Um, what's the f- fucking can't even think of the name of the tv show all i think of is characters welcome um <laughs> oh yeah he wasn't that was it fucking burn notice it yeah. was is that your guess is that the top four is, is burn notice in his top four is that your guess is that it you have to yeah. guess it if you want <laughs> yeah, yeah. no that is not in his top four oh. great guess though i love that guess. When, when you're a spy <laughs> <laughs> Characters Welcome was the slogan of the entire USA Network yes. at the time, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's no longer uh, their slogan. Okay. All right, Colin. What, what happened to this country? USA Network doesn't have Characters Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> They're unwelcome. <laughs> what, <laughs> damn it, Trump. <laughs> what happened to this country? We used to have, we used to have get USA get Characters were Welcome. I can't yeah. those fucking voice. <laughs> well, there, there, there was a caravan of characters. Yeah. yeah. Caravan, caravan of characters. Yeah. yeah caravan. Freak people out. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's my turn to guess. I believe the TV show is going to be Ash versus Evil Dead. That is correct. That yeah. is the right TV show. Yeah, Although he was also correct. in Briscoe County Junior. I was going to guess that. And Jack of All Trades. He short oh, lived. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, and it, is Ash versus Evil Dead? Is that any good? Uh, I really I liked know. it, but I really like these movies, so I thought it was great. Um, they had that other show that was a ripoff of it with the guy. What's his name? He was uh, Doctor Cox in the Scrubs. A ripoff of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yeah, it was like it's the a same weird thing show, to rip off. I don't know the show you're referring to. Matt, I'm talking about. Yeah, give me know. a movie now. Um, I will guess Army of Darkness. You will guess correctly. That is correct. All right, we're back to you, Andrew. Shit. Um, Evil Dead Two. Nope. Then, then <laughs> Sorry. You blew Sorry. It! Colin? Spider Man. No. Damn. You Matt. blew it! <laughs> no, by the way, there will not be a hint round because these, these last two are not hard. You will get them soon. Okay. Um so what's been guest of the Evil Dead series so far? Two and Army of Darkness? Yes. Yeah, but not All right. this one. I'll say this one. You are right. It is this that one. That is correct. Oh wait, it's not my turn. 
Uh, Andrew, one more Bruce Campbell movie. Uh, hmm. Give you guys a. I'll give you guys one clue since we are on the clue round. Yeah. Um, this is not a cameo or a supporting role. This is a Bruce Campbell starer. Uh, oh. <laughs> I know what I'm going to guess. Yeah, I know what you're going to guess too, I think. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed in how le- how much he is not in Sam Raimi movies going forward. Like, he's in the Spider-Man movies. He's, he's good, in- right? <laughs> yeah, like, he's, yeah, he's like he should be in it more. Yeah, yeah. Why did why is he, I think he was great on Burn Notice? He was, he was you know, great on Burn Notice. He, he, but yeah, like he turns into I love Briscoe County Jr. Great show, great actor. He's he, a little bit one of those actors like William Shatner who's just like him yeah, in yeah. whatever role. Oh, he totally. Is. And yeah. he's definitely he definitely is into chewing scenery. That's yeah. what he's become. That's right. what he is now. But, but if this you era, but like so in much. Burn Notice, he was he was very grounded. And actually Ash vs. the Evil Dead, he's playing this character, which is inherently a little over the top. But he also has some really, you know, you get to see that he can, he's kind he can of act. like the prototype for The Rock. Yeah, a little bit because it's kind of like I'm a movie star and I'm gonna do movie star stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like that is that seems to be, with the exception of like Pain and Gain. Oh, I, love, I love this moment where he gets, where <laughs> oh just my gets god, splattered. so much There's blood, blood on. All this dripping blood. out of the socket. Okay, this is the cool. light socket. This is fucking cool. Yeah, is and this cool. Is like, There's literally blood dripping out of everything in the entire architecture. And of this, this is building. like a cool essential scene in horror movies when it's just like everything turns against the bad guys, mm-hmm. yeah. which I love, which is fucking great. Um, this is cool. Oh, this right great here. moment where the blood drips down the. the this the projector. Is, this is cool as hell. Uh, amazing. So this movie is like just when it starts to get boring or starts to get like, okay, we get it. They're possessed. We've seen this makeup three times now. It starts, it adds a new element. You yeah. know, now we've got this blood coming out of everything. And then even further, like the, the final kills at the end, like it, it just keeps getting better. But then that makes me miss the fact that we don't get like an interdimensional portal in the end like we do in the, in the end of the no, second it's, one. No, it's like, but I mean, that's, that's, this is like the key and peel sketch where the whole thing is it's uh what is it uh it's uh jordan is jordan's playing a character who's making a music video and as the music video happens he runs out of money <laughs> <laughs> that's like but like here it's just like oh they like this is this seems like they storyboarded this like yeah this was they were like okay this is going to be an expensive effect if we don't get it when we get it we don't get it right and then it's kind of the do or die mentality and do you think even back then you know bruce campbell was saying like well maybe if this ash guy keeps going forward he could just keep battling dead things and like <laughs> he had ideas about maybe that. i can make an entire <laughs> career out of just playing yeah. this one character um <laughs> All right. Does anybody have a Andrew? It's still technically your turn. Oh, Do you sure. have a guess uh, for? Uh, 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 it's it's a star with him. It, he um, is a star of the show. Can I ask? Is left? it a popular movie? Um, I enjoy it. No, you, it's not. It's not a popular movie. It was like one of those like indie, you know, kind of weird. That was almost a Colin hit. It's a movie, and I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the? Can I get a decade? Um. 2000s yeah it's gonna be like 2004 i believe yeah i believe it's 2000s because i know Um, what my guess is i would say 2002 i'll give you the year oh yeah jesus i would say it's a cult classic it is definitely a cult classic I really want to watch. Does it. everyone know it here? But Andrew, I can't think of it. All right, I'm, you guys want to guess is me. All right, go pass. ahead, Colin. Pass. Bubba Hotep. It is Bubba Hotep. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Hotep. Bubba. Why did I think that was Joe Bob Briggs? Uh, kind oh. of a similar idea. You know, it's very Joe Bob Briggsy, I, but it's I definitely think, Bruce. I think we miss something with not getting a, a, a Joe Bob Briggs Bruce Campbell collaboration. <laughs> yeah, like when? Why didn't? But that has anybody ever seen them like in the, the same 90s. room? Okay, together? Yeah. Well, let's. Can we add that segment to your podcast? Who are the crossovers you'd want to see? Because I know mine right off, the, right off the bat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was always upset that there was never a Pee Wee Herman slash Ernest. Crossover. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. They seem like just. Two from mutants. The same, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're from yeah. the same galaxy. They're cut from the same weird and, and two actors who technically did other stuff, but you never really wanted to see them yeah. doing anything it's else. It's like, like, nah, 
No, no, Jim Varney, you're Ernest. It is <laughs> like, true. When you see, who's the Pee Wee Herman actor? What's uh, his name? Paul Rubens. When Paul you Rubens. see Paul Rubens pop up in something else as Paul Rubens, it's almost uncomfortable. Um, almost like, yeah. oh, I don't want to see Jim oh. Varney with a mustache and a tie on or something. You know, like I yeah, just, yeah. wear your stupid hat and your vest and <laughs> help those kids at summer I'll, camp. I'll, <laughs> I'll say this. Get, get break out of jail. prison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Rubens in Blow and Paul Rubens in what is it, Life During Wartime, the Todd Solons movie? Like, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he's also inc- incredible. Love him in uh, Batman, Batman Returns. Batman Returns. Great oh, you're going to say Batman Returns. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's him and the, the woman who plays his wife, uh, Mrs. Cobblepot, is from Pee Wee Herman also. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's um she's the French yes Miss uh, uh, Miss Elaine no not Miss Elaine wasn't Miss, it uh, like Lawrence Fishburne was also from he's from uh, the show yeah 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 Cowboy uh, Cowboy, Cowboy Carl Cowboy yes. Carl yeah crazy. but that was uh but who was the floating head guy that guy never was she, anything else uh, he became president of the United States no. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice that was That's, Barack uh, Obama no. <laughs> <laughs> that was John Paragon who died two years ago oh I know that That's because grim. <laughs> Way to bring the whole show down. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he was, uh, he's a groundling. Oh, oh, nice. One of your people. One of my people. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, Harris, you should pimp me on your podcast. So, talk yeah. about, talk about, I'm in the Sunday company at Groundlings. Everyone go see Andrew in the Sunday company. We'll, we got a spot for that at the end of the podcast. We're going to ask the you very to end. promote. The very end. The very end after everyone's already turned it off. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. no, I love your, I love your segment. So here's my question, Evil Dead specific. What's the Evil Dead crossover? Because they're actually, I will point out that in the Marvel Zombies series, comic book series, Ash Williams is a character. And they have Ash Williams, Evil Dead, Deadite, Marvel Zombie crossovers. So what would be a good, what would be a good Evil Dead crossover movie to have? Well, the obvious one is Evil Dead, Good Will Hunting. <laughs> What the fuck? Why is that the obvious? <laughs> I just picked a movie that starts with the word good. You should have started picked a movie that starts with the word alive. Oh, no. Evil Dead Alive. So a, dead a, alive. a soccer team gets strapped <laughs> in the Andes and they're eating each other. And then one of them turns into a zombie and Ash has to save them. Yeah. But I don't know. What about if like there's like a, you know, a really gifted, intelligent young man who's always... You know, <laughs> just been fighting people. And We're <laughs> watching that movie. <laughs> It'd be like if Ash, this, this chaos is Ash happening, and this. then he looks at the at the wall, and there's a math problem, and he just starts like, like solving four. It. Two <laughs> plus two is <Yeah>. four. <laughs> I gotta go see about a girl. She's dead, but she's still sort of alive. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Paris! You talked about how it bothers you that this movie didn't really like set up the next one that much but you know they do show that deer head on the wall several (laughs) times in this (laughs) that's true that's true no it it doesn't bother me it it just i just do think that the other two are directly connected whereas this one is sort of the outlier is in the in a similar way that the you know the legacy sequel is sort of an outlier where it's like technically in the same world but it does seem very different not Um, realistic but gross the vibe i figured out what the vibe of this movie is the, this movie is like, that's great. Everything about this. Oh, this, this is incredible. awesome. When this is okay. So this out. is when he's his buddy. Oh. His, oh my god! The other dude who died is getting his eyes gouged out and stabbed with stuff. There's it's just oh, this this some of the best effects of the movie are are that guy. Did you guys ever have a friend in high school that would draw like disgusting pictures in their science textbook or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Or like in 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 a notebook. Uh, this movie does remind me of Rob Zombie stuff. Yeah, it reminds you. It like reminds the the, it, dra- the 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 actual drawings and stuff. Yeah, it reminds did. me yeah. of like because because basically this is like this is a college kids project, mm. and college kids are not adults; they're babies. Yeah. So this is like it's like reading it's like reading a high school kid's diary. Yeah. It's it's juvenile in the best way imaginable. Could you imagine making this when you're 20 years old though? Like what a feat! I mean, I I'm embarrassed to show you guys the stuff I made when I was 20 years old. I'm embarrassed <laughs> to show you guys the stuff I made when I was in my 30s. I'm embarrassed <laughs> to show you the stuff I'm making now. <laughs> I like that the necklace was in the shape of a skull when he picks it up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, was, I didn't even notice that. I don't think until you said that. I love this whole sequence. It's so cheesy. <laughs> like, I don't, why doesn't she just stab him in the back? Right. Yeah. Now? Yeah. 
She just keeps whacking him. <laughs> uh, Which is also... F- I don't feel like cool. the necklace could actually hook on to the book. The book is gross looking. This all yeah. seems very improbable, uh, yeah. The props, yeah. Everything is like... Re- done they really do a well. nice job with a lot of the props, yeah. Could you imagine what they felt shooting the master of this? Like the super wide shot that like, this is such like, a piece of shit. Yeah. How, many, <laughs> how many times do you think they did all this crap? <laughs> like, yeah, that, yeah. My question is like, keep writhing, they even keep have writhing them? around on the ground, keep yeah. writhing. They definitely did one take. I, yeah. I, that's always like that's always the most disconcerting shot to shoot. The master, the master. It always looks like shit. <laughs> it always looks like shit, and you and you know that you're never gonna. Have you ever been on a set where the director is like shooting the master a dozen times, and you're like. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Don't, we're never going to use any of these. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be this is going to be a half a second of the movie. Yeah, I've been on sets where I'm just like, and it, part of it was like student films, but also on professional sets, especially early in the shoot, where they're just overshooting everything because you got all this time and you got you know, look at the schedule. We got months and or like entrances, they're just shooting like yeah. someone coming through the door a hundred times. You're like what? somebody walking across the room. And you're like, there's no way an editor is going to let that person walk all the way across the room in the fucking movie. It's just going to get cut. Why are you shooting this again? You know, it's a pet peeve of mine. I hate when uh it's like an over so like one actor has their back to the camera you don't see their mouth or their face yeah. but when that actor messes up their lines they stop and they're like oh sorry sorry i gotta take that again it's like yeah we no, are never gonna use yeah. what you're saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just keep going yeah you're at best like scratch track audio you're not yeah. even <laughs> in this and um, they blow the whole thing and then they, they take it back again oh it's yeah you are not allowed to, to stop <laughs> you just go uh, yeah, all the time lapse stuff was really cool. Apparently, this was the biggest pain in the ass, though, because it took them like all day to shoot those couple of seconds of time lapse oh, stuff. Wow. Oh my and, god! And like everyone was like, that's, that's can, like corn. Oatmeal. Can we move that's on? Be but, corn. Yeah, corn, cream corn, cream corn. These effects cream coming corn. up are some of my I had favorites. A, when like the monster bursts out of them. Like, this is a random aside, but um, I had a great aunt that died of cream corn. What? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't understand that. Like, what yeah, does that mean? neither do we. We just have the death certificate, and it says cause of death creamed corn <laughs> Wait, I, was it what? like was it like old oh yeah it was like a long time like like before my time before my dad's time it was a my a great aunt on my dad's oh side my has a death certificate that says cause of death creamed corn and we don't know if like that she was anything yeah that it could, could mean be she was struck by a can of cream or corn. or at the grocery store a shelf of cream corn fell on her and oh. crushed her or possibly you know botulism or you know what if the what if the cream corn was being processed in some kind of giant vat or something yeah, like what that? if she drowned in a yeah. vat of cream corn holy shit this is actually this is incredible all this, what we're seeing is... is oh, just everything fantastic. in the finale of this movie is pretty... It, it's like it's gross. various time-lapse stuff and then like puppetry and, you know... Claymation, uh, I think. Models. At this point, yeah. I started thinking to myself, okay, if he survives this, how do you explain what happened to everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, all my <laughs> friends died and no. I'm okay. You don't even try. <laughs> I think I wanted to write that script once where it's like, all right, write the evil dead, but write evil dead... Ash, oh, the next yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Ash comes into town, it's covered in blood. He has <laughs> to call to the cops. <laughs> call, talk to his cops, like, don't go up there. Do not yeah. go up there. And they're like, son, get in the car, we're going to go. Um, Sally's parents, the... they call him, they're like, or whatever the girl's name is, yeah. and they're like, where's our daughter? He's like... Ooh, oh, long story. Yeah. <laughs> I think a bunch of the challenge of writing that is the the stuff they didn't write into this movie. Like, why the fuck did they go there anyway? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> this... <laughs> See, and this is the other thing. Even the blood is inconsistent because some of the blood has looked really shitty, but the blood on him right now looks good, like the color, the consistency. And it, yeah. I suspect my my gut is that they had a makeup guy who did all the blood makeup on this, and he made a, I guess he was using coffee grounds in his blood, which is sort of, you know, my ex who does a lot of makeup stuff, that's one of her secrets is, you know, in addition to like the caro and the food coloring and the, you know, whatever, all the other shit. Um, gives corn, it a thickness corn starch. or something? It gives it a thickness and a darker color. Well, it's because a lot of, of times up. blood is too bright. <laughs> yes, very good, Colin. Um, <laughs> but it's but some of the blood in this is great and some of it looks like way too red. and Probably like, makes it smell better too, come to think of it. Yeah, and you know, in theor- theory, it could be like also edible. In you wouldn't want to eat it. Um, we should start... Uh, Wrapping up. Summing it up. Yeah. Um, this has been The Evil Dead, and now we're going to give our, uh, our our ratings and our whether we license this movie. I, I will I will go first. 
I think this is a very good film for what it is. I, I'm probably going to grade it on. I think you can't help but grade this movie on a little bit of a curve because I, like any indie film. A groove, you might say. <laughs> yeah, groovy. Mm, nice. Um, like he didn't any, say groovy until next time, or did he? I don't say think groovy? he says it until the next. In one. The he doesn't next say one. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was another thing. I forgot that he doesn't even get his hand cut off in this one. I'm like, what the fuck's that all about? I was gonna um, say there is that one scene where um, the the woman she, stabs she him, bites her own hand off. Oh yeah, yeah. She stabs him in the arm, like with the right. the demonic knife or whatever. And isn't that what becomes the him having to cut his hand off scene later? I for, I don't remember. Um. I don't remember either. Okay. Anyways, we'll find out. To conclude, you'll find out too if you continue to listen to License to Watch. <laughs> Good plug. Um, yeah, I think I, you got to rate this on a little bit of a curve because of the you know the budget and because it was pretty groundbreaking at the time in terms of you know taking off as like a midnight movie. Um, it looks great. Uh, you can already see Sam Raimi sort of developing his identity. I think you see a lot of the good parts of Bruce Campbell sort of emerges emerging in this film and um but it mostly its biggest function is as a sort of setting the table for the future evil dead movies which i think are all better so um with that in mind i am going to give this a six timothy dolphins um we operate on timothy dolphins so six out of ten timothy dolphins say joel cohen oh yeah you were right um and that is my grade Six, wonderful. All right, uh, I'll say I enjoy this movie very much. Um, it's one of those movies you start to watch it and you're like, "Ah, oh, this is old. This is like out, you know, dated looking. Uh, it's cheesy." But then you start seeing the effects and you're like, "Okay, these are still great. These still hold up." And then you start to get bored and you're like, "All right, how much of this slop can I watch?" And then it starts to get different and more inventive and like you know the shots are the shot choices too are like you know it's not boring like everything he's he's like really he's making trying a fucking movie things. yeah <laughs> he's really going making the for hell it. out of it yeah and uh it's just great and you you can really see you know you don't have to know much about this movie but you can see like uh, uh why it was got the accolades that it did you know like or the uh the um reputation rather and uh, yeah, it's it's just awesome. It's cool, and it makes me. I'm excited to watch the others, especially Army of Darkness, which I have never seen. Incredible! <laughs> I know, still blows my mind. Yeah, so I wanted to tell you guys before I I, I revisited these or I visited these for the first time, I should say, in college. It, I had avoided them as a kid. I was afraid of the boxes, and um, you know, finally in college, I was like, you know, I'm going to school for film. I have to see the greatest films ever made <laughs> and this, so, this is on your list but i was like scared i, I like thought these are really scary and so i watched one and two on the same day in broad daylight on like a random saturday i was like i have to just watch these and for whatever reason i never got to the third one and just net from there like never got to it i envy you that mm -hmm. you still get to watch it for the first time yeah uh what's your dolphin rating my dolphin rating is yeah, I'm going to give it seven Timothy Dolphins. Andrew, you want to jump in? Yeah. I'm clarifying what I said early, early, earlier with the, the kind of complicated tradition of filmmaking that this movie does inspire. And I'm saying this is that if you make movies, if you're going to make movies, you kind of have to watch this movie. You have to. It's essential viewing. Not because not because it's incredible, not because it's it's scary. It's not. It really isn't scary. I I I can't imagine being scared at this movie, watching this movie and being like, oh, this is scary or this is utterly terrifying. Like and I that's not a dig on low budget movies. Um it's impressive. Is what it's it impressive. Is. It's an it's an impressive feat. It's an impressive idea too that people just went out and made a movie. But um, and I also think watching it from the point of view of the, the Raimi brothers and what they brought to filmmaking later on with 
Spider-Man movies. Um, and, ju- and just with kind of the ethos of they were kind of blue collar guys who this is, they, they worked their way into this industry by making a movie, which is kind of incredible. And if you are interested in, in movies at all, you kind of have to watch this movie. That said, um, <laughs> you realize like when you watch this movie, you're like, oh, the ending is is really what matters in a movie. And no, the whole movie is what matters in a movie because <laughs> the the reverse parabola of this movie is kind of incredible. The premise start, t- first 10 minutes, great. And then it's kind of like we're waiting for the for the big finish. And the big finish is great. There's so much good stuff in the last like 20 minutes. Um the middle of the movie is kind of tedious and like you said, did redundant. you, it's redundant. Yeah. You're like, Oh, it doesn't, it's not like watching other horror movies where it completely like hereditary. I remember watching yeah. that and being like, I don't know where the fuck they're going with this. This is kind of incredible. Yeah. Um, with, we should do that as a bonus movie. Sometimes I, I swear to God, heredity is such a good fucking movie. I love it. It was like my favorite film of that year. Yeah, or mine too. And it's I'm not even a huge horror movie guy, but that's like it's a new classic. It is a new classic, and it's it's also like you watch that and you're like, oh, that's a movie that's a horror movie that's expressing the horror in being part of a family and having a fucked up legacy. That movie has depth. <laughs> that movie has depth. This is um this movie feels like you're at a campfire drinking warm light beer and someone who's like i'm gonna tell a scary story and you're like all right i'll go with it and like the guy's charming and doesn't really know how to tell movies or tell stories but you're like you know this is kind of fun but like like i said like when you watch the second one when his arm gets cut off and he puts a chainsaw on you're like oh it's this movie is this movie is essentially a rough draft Uh of a script that's evil dead 2 yeah. So it's interesting to watch it from that point of view. And it's interesting to watch it say, this is what a movie looks like without the toys of Hollywood. It's funny that you say, like, this is essential viewing if you want to make films. But I think the f- watching both of these movies, one and two, in succession, yeah, that's, that's the essential viewing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of value in, in this movie, even if it's not individually great. You know, this movie is a sketch. It's a sketch of the of the second one, and yeah. it's like, which is weird because it's prophetic. That's how filmmaking is like. Professional filmmaking is now uh, anywhere from seventy to one hundred percent of a movie is going to be previsd, and this feels like a previs <laughs> for the next movie. for Evil yeah. Dead Two, but well, that was always the big thing about the Sundance Labs was like they get they let you like you know basically practice a few scenes of your movie and so many things have come out of those labs that ended up being great because how often does a low budget filmmaker get to do this practice Mm -hmm. one you know yeah no i I, yeah but it is like was this turned into a a broadway play like an off broadway i think it was i think it was like a music they did like the camp musical musical musical. that's right it was a musical I think my Here, brother might Here's my it. question. And here's the thing. I think you absolutely need to watch this if you're going to make movies. Because it's just to understand the commitment that it takes to make a movie, it's a really important study. That said, I think the bigger question for this movie is, does this movie deserve the legacy that it has? Because think about it. There's like... When you take a look at, mo- at a movie like Ghostbusters, it has all this merch. Yeah. There's all this legacy to it. But then you watch the first one, you're like, holy shit, like, this is funny. It's entertaining as it's, hell. It holds up. Yeah. It holds yeah. up. Yeah. This one maybe doesn't as, it's not Ghostbusters. It's not but I think, bad, though. And it's, yeah. it's, it's good. You know, it's, it's not, not it's unwatchable not, I think, at all. I think you have to, I think it can only be appreciated in context. Um, like, if you showed this to, you know, a layman person who wasn't familiar with movies, they would be like, I can't watch this. Yeah, yeah, probably. But if you show it to anybody who's sort of a little more industry savvy and knows how difficult it is to do these things, they'd be like, holy shit, this is pretty impressive. Right. And I guess that's the difference. So I guess it doesn't hold up universally, but in context, I think it's 
it's pretty strong. Yeah. The real question, That's, though. Um, oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say the real question, though, is, Andrew, how many Timothy Dolphins would you oh, right. give this out of 10? Um, all right. If you're under the age of 25 <laughs> and you're interested in making movies, 10 out of 10. Wow. If but for the ge- for the general public, four out of ten. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I yeah I get it. I mean like that's that's what I you know started out when we when we all went around and talked about um you know our first experience watching this movie. I was I was like I want to be an adult now, and I'm also interested in films. I've seen a lot of the movies that you know went to the multiplex cinemas like you know and now i'm like 19 and i want to know something more and like this movie these movies have like this reputation and they're also like gross and scary which is something i like maybe wouldn't have sought out before and so yeah like like there was sort of a um there's sort of a a rite of passage to it i guess it, um, that's exactly what it is it's a rite of passage yeah. movie it's this is a movie you watch at a midnight with a beer yeah um but this is ultimately like a student film that you screen once for your classmates everyone cheers and loves it but somehow this movie like <laughs> it's, it's stood the test of time stood the test of time it like yeah. made it into like the uh the zeitgeist of the world you know yeah sorry go ahead uh so yeah i, I mean like i think everything's already been said basically I, I don't really need to rehash it i would love to you know waste more of the listener's time please, <laughs> but please i think i'll go ahead and just go right in and up mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna split the difference between harris and andrew's score and give it a five timothy dolphins all right uh so that means what is that that's that's pretty cl- that's licensed right um that averages out to a five and a half i think oh we so gave it a four five so what is licensed <laughs> is does it have to be six to be licensed to watch this is right on the edge i, th- I thought above three was the- <laughs> well i think th- i think the licensing is different than the scoring yeah yeah right because like we're giving this sort of a middling score it's, it's like what andrew it, said as it, as if, you're, if you're if you're under 25 and you need to learn about this i feel I like we gave this thing, a sure. very accurate yeah. score i loved <laughs> i will say this is the movie is not as good as my first experience of watching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I it's one of those a, movies that probably never could. Be. And I had a perfect, it was a perfect storm. I was my best friend in the world, Kevin Kelly. Um, who's also one of my, uh, he's also my first cousin. We were in a movie theater and the movie theater was not crowded, which is actually an awesome way. So you can kind of fuck around with your buddies, throw popcorn at the screen. Nobody gives a shit. And the person running the projector was a friend of ours. So it was like $3. You go in, you can drink a cheap beer, a couple cheap beers like that are room temperature. And (laughs) it's like, it's cool to watch it because it's like, I don't know, I was 19 or 20 at the time. So I felt like it was, it brings me back to a time in my life where I was like, holy shit, like that was a great summer. Um, so there's a lot of nostalgic value to this movie. And it's also, it is inspiring for what it was, which is, a, a guy and his best friend from childhood going out and making a movie. And it, it inspired me the heck out of me when I started making short films. Yeah. It's, it's got the same value almost as like the room. Have you guys seen that? Like the Tommy was so, yeah, you would movie, never yeah. watch that like on your own and just enjoy it. You know, like that movie is made although not purposefully <laughs> to be watched in a theater with people and like laugh at it, you know, like yeah. it is a group experience. This isn't, this isn't the value from this doesn't come from its incompetence, which no. is what the, the room is, yeah. but it is like sort of it's, this gets a conditional license to watch because in the right circumstances, if you have the right interest, this is a must watch, but for the general public, it's probably not. Yeah. And, and, and if you're in the middle there, it probably is. So yeah, like, maybe not a must watch. There, there is a group that is like a must not watch, I think. Yeah. Also. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. There's oh probably God. multiple yeah. groups that are a must not yeah. watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess we can give this a conditional license to watch. So on one, two, three. Ready? One, two, three. License, license to, to watch. watch. Oh. <laughs>
I did this. We've never <laughs> like what do you count? We've, we've for? never done that before. Guys, I'm, I'm I, creating new I bits. I like that I was I like that I was able to just improv and roll with it. I just yes anded that that random countdown. Yeah, you're showing up um, the uh, the groundlings. Guy yeah, right yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Andrew, what are you working on? And and can anybody follow you on social media somewhere, or should they stay away? No, you can follow me on social media. I don't post that much. Sometimes I do stories. But uh, on Instagram at Andrew F. Hobson. Um, what am I working on right now? Um, we should say that this is coming out. Uh, this is our first episode of 2023. Oh, cool. So yeah. welcome to the new year. Happy yeah, New Year, Happy buddy. New Year. Uh, happy New Year. What am I working on? Um, I start the weekly rotation at the Groundlings Theater in Hollywood, California in May where I'll be doing weekly sketch shows every Sunday. Um, I feel like I totally did not, because I was not wearing my goofball hat today. I was just, Oh, you weren't funny? Th- well, that's the thing. I, like, I'm not, like... Your humor's very subtle, though, so I guess. you might have been in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Harris. I'm sure my jokes were good enough. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I you're like, sitting next to Colin, so you yeah. seemed funnier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're funny by proxy. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure, like, no. But anyway, I start doing that, uh, working on a feature with Harris that we've been developing for a while. A while a now. Bit. It's coming um, along great. Also in the horror comedy genre. Yeah, which you can't write a horror comedy and not watch this yeah you also true. can't write a low budget horror comedy and not watch this or a low budget horror movie and not watch this and that's essentially what we've developed over the past couple of years uh i'm working with a bunch of uh f- comedy friends on uh a web series we're going to be putting out uh sometime next year uh uh, I think it'll be pretty good. I'll uh, have to have you on again closer to when that comes out. Oh my god, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then uh, working on uh, I lived in actually worked on a big budget Hollywood movie that I found out is now coming out um, this year, if twenty twenty three. Actually, I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it. Well, in what well, capacity? You're in it? I'm in it briefly. <sighs> uh, actually, can we scratch this? Everything from... Yeah, no problem. Uh, Is it an I'm, off-mic story? You can tell us about it. No, 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 no. It's all good stuff. It's just I don't want to scoop, yeah. scoop the release date. I worked yeah, exactly. On a, yeah. No, uh, we can cut all this. Yeah, we should cut all this. We'll, we'll do, Next time we have you on, it'll yeah. probably be closer to... Yeah, I can... The trailer and the... Cut this out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the trailer and the release date for the, I'll tell you this off camera. Um, but, um, yeah, those are my two big things. And then writing a feature with a comedian, a uh, friend of mine who, um, yeah, hopefully we will take that out at the top of, top of the next year, top of, tr- or excuse me, fuck, sorry. You can cut this up until now and say, uh, working on a feature script with a comedian friend of mine that we're going to be taking out later this year. Nice. All right. Well, yeah. Andrew Hobson, thank you for coming on the show. Of yes, course. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, what do we, you. what do we, how do we go out for this? I don't, I don't even know how we end the episode. Um, There's no well, song for this movie. Yeah. I got the song right here. I'm going to start playing it and, uh, I'm going to say thank you to Andrew Hobson for, uh, being and on the show. Thanks. Are you song? saying it or are you saying you're going to say it? Thank you I'm guys for it. having me. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I don't to, like uh, that you played an actual song. What happened to us singing at the end of the show? Uh, we can still There's do that. no song from this to sing. I like, know. We don't know the, so it's good that he has a song in this context, but I hope this doesn't preclude us from singing Holiday Road at some future point. You know, I'm hearing the song uh, and it's sounding real good. If the music's in your heart, you can always sing. <laughs> thanks to Chris Morocco for making this song that we're listening to right now. Uh, who else do we have to thank? Nobody. I think no one. Uh, the nope. Ramey, Ramey brothers Thanks for to making the Ramey brothers. Sam and Ted. I don't Sam know how Ted. Ted got lumped in as one of the Ramey brothers, though. At some point during this podcast, Ted Ramey just got lumped in as one of the uh, <laughs> the important Ramey brothers. Uh, who was, he- wait, who did, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, 
drag me to hell. Raimi. Sam. That's Sam Raimi. That's and his brother co-wrote it with him, right? I think Did so, he? Yeah, he might have. So, but Ted is also, every time I see Ted Raimi, I'm like, oh, that guy. Because he is like in a lot of these movies. Hold on, guys. I got the outro music plan. Uh, if you like our show and you want to hear more, we do have a Patreon uh, for $1 a month. If you go to www.patreon.com slash L2W for license to watch. Uh, you can hear us discuss some of your favorite non-franchise classics such as... What have we done lately? Quick and the Dead. Quick and the Dead. Oh my god. All right, that's, that's yet to come out, I think. Dark Man. Yeah, they're Let's coming talk- up. I'm teasing future oh, yeah. episodes. Oh yeah, we got Dark, Dark Man. Dark great. Although that is a franchise, but... Uh, we're yeah, gonna, we're only doing one of them. Quick yeah. and the Dead's great. Drag they, Me to Hell is awesome. Dra- we should do Drag should Me to Hell, drag too. Me to hell. I wanted to do... I wanted to watch Crime Wave. I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, Crime you, Wave, you it was on... It, that was at the movie movie store that I used to work on, but it was only on VHS. And I did not have access to I think to it never made it farther than the VHS. I think it's still on VHS. Yeah, yeah. so join us next time, everyone, for... And give us your dollars. Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>